Hi everyone, thanks for watching another video about this CompTIA Security Plus certification. Today we're going to look at some exam questions. We will go over them together and hopefully we can learn from it. Uh, this way you have a good idea what you can expect on the exam. Thanks for watching, see you soon. Hi everyone, thanks for watching the eighth uh, video of this video series about the CompTIA Security Plus certification. We're gonna make test eight together today, so without further ado, let's keep it moving. Which functionality allows for DLP system to fulfill its role? DLP standing for data loss prevention. Um, data, uh, that's content, content. Continue. Which of the answers listed below refers to a security solution that can be implemented as a function of a data loss prevention? Well, USB blocking is one of them. You can make sure that all the systems in your network, uh, their USB ports are um, disabled, so nobody can plug in an external uh, hard drive and uh, copy data. Uh, and the other way is uh, email monitoring. So big attachments cannot really uh, easily be sent out, or maybe it's not allowed at all. Uh, I would also say cloud-based security, but Nowadays, a lot of companies do work in the cloud, so I don't think this is the way to go. I think the most common things are the USB blocking and email monitoring. A type of computer security solution that allows to define and enforce network access policies is known as. Uh, that's, that's quite easy. A NUC, uh, network access list. And that's usually done based on a MAC address, the hardware address of your network interface card. Which of the following answers refers to an implementation of network access uh, control list? Uh, that's uh, a MAC filter, what I just said, based on the hardware address of your network interface card. Bring your own devices different. This is IDS, IPS and the 802.1x standard. A company security policy requires all employee devices to have a software installed that would run in the background service on each device. Um, yeah, let's see. Yes. Agent-based and that's a permanent. This could be like, um, yeah, granting and defying access to corporate intranet. Agent is either a client or a device and a permanent, uh, permanent rule. Continue. What type of security measures can be implemented on an Amex gateway? A gateway always being um, yeah, either a router or a device that filters network traffic at the end of the network before it's passed on to the internet or maybe even a different network. Uh, security measures, you can encrypt data on it. Um, yes, you can do a, a data loss prevention system there. So, you know, because it leaves your uh, internal network before it goes onto the internet, so you can implement a DLP there. And also very easy, a spam filter, because it's the main point in your network where um, data flows through. So you can do the encryption of data, you can do a data loss prevention, and you can uh, try to block as much spam as you can with a filter. Continue. What type of device would be the most common for interconnecting two or more physical separated network segments? That's a, a wireless bridge. That's why it says bridge. And it's a layer three switch. With, oh, wait. Mm. This is a router, separated network segment. No, this is not a bridge. It has to be a bridge then, because a layer three switch, which it already says, layer three on the network of the OSI model, and this bridge bridge the gaps between segments. So it has to be a bridge. And apparently we can only have one answer, otherwise I would Pick those two answers. Continue. SSL TLS accelerators are used to decode secure communication links for the purpose of content inspection. No, not content inspection. It's uh, it's just a dedicated hardware card doing the encoding and decoding of secure communications. So 
but not with the purpose of content inspection. So this is false. Continue. An SSL decryptor card is a type of dedicated hardware device and improves performance. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Yes, this is true. Next. A type of device that translates data between different communication formats. It's not a multi-layer switch because this is the OZ model. It's really about different formats. So let's say MP4 and MPEG. That has to be a media gateway. Continue. Uh, let's see. This is the hardware associated software firmware. Provides cryptographic functions. Okay, that's a, a special piece of hardware. Uh, and that's the hardware security module. Sometimes it's used for encryption or something like that. And hardware security module is HSM. Continue. Software tool used for capturing and examining content of network traffic is known as. Uh, it's not a port scanner because then you're really only uh, scanning ports. So Honeypot is something else. Vulnerability scanner, you're scanning for vulnerabilities on your network, on your router, or maybe certain systems. It has to be a protocol analyzer. Capture and examining. Yes, so you can examine the different protocols, SSH, HTTPS, FTP, whatever is running on your network. Continue. Which of the following is a graphical user interface packet sniffer? That's a Wireshark. Wireshark. This has a graphical user interface. Maybe in the future I'll make a video on Wireshark. It's a very, uh, very big and very neat program. And it does have a graphical user interface. Continue. Mm, which of the following is a CLI packet sniffer? I think this is command command line interface, yes. So that's running on the command line, and that's a program called TCP dump. Nmap is probably also command line and both um, also graphical user interface, but I'm sure TCP dump is a client uh, interface. Uh, I mean command line interface. I'm sorry. Continue. What's Nmap? Nmap is a network scanner. Yes, continue. Which of the tools listed below could be used to detect a rogue AP? AP standing for access point, not a vulnerability scanner. It has to be a wireless scanner. AP access point. Uh, maybe it sends out uh, almost identical uh, SSID, but with little differences here. And with this scanner, you might be able to detect uh, one. Which of the following tools would be used to perform a site survey? Mm, you can also do a site survey with a wireless scanner. PFSense is a is a yeah, open source firewall uh, router solution. Wireless scanner, open VAS is something else, and Nmap is uh, net for a network, but it's about a whole site survey, so wireless scanner. Um, John the Ripper gain enable cracking software. Which of the tools listed below offers the functionality of a vulnerability scanner? Open VAS. This is also because you see open, it's open source. It's actually a vulnerability scanner that you can let loose on your own network and it will, uh, it will find vulnerabilities or at least uh, give you an indication if you're up to date with patches, uh, stuff like that. Very interesting uh, software. Continue. Which of the following tools offer the functionality of a configuration compliance scanner? Uh, that's Nessus. Nessus. Which of the answers listed below is an example of an exploitation framework? And framework, that's really the key uh, word here because we learned that the uh, Metasploit, it's, uh, it's a framework. It's not an application. Continue. Which of the name of the listed? Practicing penetration out of the box Kali Linux. Yes, Kali Linux. Don't get confused with Red Hat, but it's um, the Kali Linux distribution so far. I did one video on Kali Linux after the security uh, CompTIA Security Plus certification. I will uh, make more videos on Kali. Continue. Mm. Permanent. Irreversible removal of data. 
right out of the box, I would say high level four mining because it sounds like uh, the most thorough action to uh, to permanently remove data, but it's actually san sanitization. Continue the purpose of stenography. That's basically, uh, let's say for instance, you have an uh, an image. Uh, you download the image and you have a program to put uh, data inside of it. And the image, when you click on it, you still see a picture of a windmill or a car. But when you open it with the same program that you put data into the image, you can read the message. So it's basically the purpose of this is to hide data inside or within another piece of data. In this case, in this example, uh, an, an image. Continue. Uh, let's see, a monitored host containing no valuable data specifically designed to detect unauthorized access attempts, honeypot, straight out of the box. And honeypot is definitely something that you uh, you put up on inside your own network, making it, uh, making it vulnerable um, for uh, uh, unauthorized access attempts, or at least try to get access to this machine. And when the hacker traps inside the honeypot, uh, you can get more information about your potential hackers. So it's it's yeah. If you're under lots of attacks as a company, you can put on up a honeypot, and in that way you can kind of trap a hacker. And um, you know every hacker has to leave some traces here and there, and uh, you can get information out of that and to see where the potential attacks are coming from or get more information about the attack uh, attack methods that they make. And based on that, uh, improve security. Finish. Let's go over some of the answers. Content inspection, correct. Ha, huh, okay, I missed cloud-based. Yes, definitely, because when you have a Google Drive or you have a OneDrive or Microsoft, you can still upload there. You know, it's just drag and drop and a whole big files you can upload to the cloud. So yeah, all of those. It has to do down data loss prevention, all has to do with data. Network access controls, Mac filtering, the standard, agent-based, permanent encryption, DLP, spam filter, wireless bridge. Okay, it's also not a layer three switch. It's really the bridge to a more physical separated network segments. That was false. Okay, I missed here one. Your answer, this is false. Okay. Dedicated. Okay, that's false. Okay, well, media gateway, mm, hardware security module, protocol analyzer, Wireshark, TCP dump, network scanner, wireless scanner, wireless scanner, John the Ripper can enable, open VAS, vulnerability, the V gives it away, Nessus, Metasploit framework Metasploitable. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's right. You can also download um uh deliberately weak Linux distribution full of security holes uh for practicing penetration testing techniques. Then you can use Kali Linux to attack the Metasploitable machine. Yes. I should have known that. Sanitization, correct. Hiding data, yeah, that's correct. And a honeypot. Okay, 25 questions, 22 are correct. Not bad, not bad at all. Now we'll move on to the next video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. And uh, we hope to see you in the next video.